For decades, the best engines in the world were heavy and complicated. The RD-180 engine was the gold standard for a long time. It was a Russian design that the United States used for many years. It was very reliable, but it was also very heavy. It produced a lot of thrust, but it weighed a lot, too. When you divide the thrust by the weight, you get a number that tells you how efficient the design is. For the RD-180, that number was 78. For a long time, engineers thought that was as good as it could get. They believed that if you tried to make the engine more powerful without making it heavier, the metal would simply fail. The pressure inside the engine would be too high. The heat would be too intense. It would be like trying to hold a miniature sun inside a soda can. The main problem was the pressure inside the combustion chamber. This is the place where the fuel and oxygen meet and explode to create thrust. To get more power out of a small engine, you have to increase the pressure. The RD-180 operated at about 267 bar of pressure. That is a massive amount of force, but to get to the performance SpaceX wanted, they had to go much higher. They aimed for 350 bar. To understand how much pressure that is, imagine the weight of an entire school bus pressing down on an area the size of a postage stamp. Most metals would simply crush or melt under those conditions. Previous attempts by NASA and other companies often ended in disaster. Engines would explode on the test stand because a single tiny crack in a metal pipe would turn into a massive hole in a fraction of a second. This is why the industry stayed with lower pressures for so long. It was safer and it was proven. Another big hurdle was cooling. Rocket engines run on fuel and oxygen. When they burn, they create temperatures that are hotter than molten steel. If you do not cool the engine walls, the metal will turn into liquid and the engine will blow up. The traditional way to solve this was to use thick walls and heavy cooling systems. This made the engines very heavy. It also limited how much power they could produce. If you wanted more power, you needed more cooling, which meant more weight. It was a circle that always led back to the same problem. You could have a powerful engine or you could have a light engine, but you could not have both. This was the conventional wisdom for over half a century. Even the best engineers at Boeing and Lockheed Martin followed this rule because the physics seemed to demand it. Then there was the issue of the engine cycle. Most rockets use what is called a gas generator cycle or a staged combustion cycle. In these designs, some of the fuel is burned just to run the pumps that move the rest of the fuel into the main chamber. The exhaust from these pumps is often just thrown away. This is a waste of energy. It is like having a car where 10% of the gasoline is used just to keep the fuel pump running and that gas never helps the car move forward. This waste makes the engine less efficient. To build the most powerful engine in the world, SpaceX knew they had to find a way to use every single drop of fuel for thrust. They decided to use a very rare and difficult design called full flow staged combustion. Here is how they actually did it. The breakthrough came when SpaceX moved away from traditional rocket fuel and traditional engine cycles. Instead of using kerosene, they chose methane. Methane is the same gas many people use to heat their homes or cook food. It burns very cleanly and does not leave behind the black soot that kerosene does. This is important because soot can clog up the tiny pipes inside a rocket engine. By using methane, SpaceX could build an engine that was easier to reuse. But the real magic was the full-flow staged combustion cycle. This is a design where every bit of fuel and every bit of oxygen is turned into a hot gas before it even reaches the main burning chamber. In this system, there are two separate pre-burners. One pre-burner handles the oxygen and a little bit of fuel. The other pre-burner handles the fuel and a little bit of oxygen. These pre-burners run the pumps, but instead of throwing the exhaust away, they send it all into the main chamber. This means the engine has two separate streams of high-pressure gas hitting the main burner at the same time. This creates a massive amount of power without wasting anything. This design is so hard to build that only two other groups in history had ever tried it. 
both of them failed. The Soviet Union tried it in the 1960s with the RD-270 engine, but they could never get it to work reliably. NASA tried it with the HG-3 engine, but they gave up because it was too complex. SpaceX took this impossible design and turned it into a working machine. To make this work at 350 bar of pressure, SpaceX had to invent new materials. They created a special metal alloy called SX-500. This metal can handle extreme heat and extreme pressure without melting or cracking. They also used advanced manufacturing like 3D printing. Traditional engines are made by casting and welding many different parts together. This adds weight and creates weak spots where the parts join. SpaceX 3D printed complex parts of the Raptor engine as single pieces of metal. This made the parts stronger and much lighter. Because they could print the parts, they could also design complex cooling channels inside the metal that would be impossible to make any other way. These channels allow the fuel to flow through the walls of the engine, soaking up the heat and keeping the metal solid. The result is the Raptor 4 engine. It weighs about 1 500 kilograms, which is about as much as a small car, but it produces over 300 tons of thrust. To put that in perspective, a single Raptor engine produces enough power to keep two Boeing 747 airplanes in the air at the same time. When you divide that 300 tons of thrust by its weight, you get a ratio of 220. This is nearly three times better than the RD-180 engine. It is a massive leap forward that changed the rules of rocket science. It proved that you could build a compact light engine that was also the most powerful ever made. This breakthrough was the key to making the Starship rocket possible. Without an engine this powerful and light, a giant reusable rocket could never work. The victory for SpaceX is not just in the lab, it is on the scoreboard. They have demonstrated this performance repeatedly in actual flight tests. While other companies are still struggling to build their first high-pressure engines, SpaceX is already mass-producing the Raptor. They have built hundreds of them. This is a major shift in how the industry works. For a long time, companies like Boeing and ULA dominated the market. They used the old way of building rockets, which was slow and very expensive. For example, the Boeing Starliner program has faced years of delays and software failures. It cost over $4.2 billion in NASA contracts, yet it has struggled to complete its mission. In contrast, the SpaceX Crew Dragon was flying astronauts to the space station by 2020 at a much lower cost. The competitive gap is even wider when you look at the heavy lift rockets. NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, is a giant rocket built using older technology from the Space Shuttle era. According to the NASA Inspector General, a single launch of the SLS costs about $4.1 billion. That is a staggering amount of money. For that same price, SpaceX could theoretically launch their Starship rocket hundreds of times. SpaceX is aiming for a launch cost of about $10 million once the system is fully operational. When you compare $4.1 billion to $10 million, the difference is clear. One is a government project that uses old, expensive parts that are thrown into the ocean after every flight. The other is a modern engineering breakthrough that is designed to be used over and over again, just like an airplane. Another competitor is Blue Origin with their BE-4 engine. This engine was designed to replace the Russian RD-180. It is a powerful engine, but it does not use the full-flow staged combustion cycle. It uses a simpler design that is easier to build, but less efficient. The BE-4 has faced years of delays and only recently started flying on the Vulcan rocket. Even with the BE-4, the Vulcan rocket is not fully reusable. This means the engines are lost every time they fly. SpaceX's Raptor engine is designed to fly, land, and fly again within a very short time frame. This reuse is what makes the cost so low. 
In 2023 alone, SpaceX launched nearly 100 rockets, which is more than any other company or country in history. They are flying more than once every three days. The Starship program has already conducted several integrated test flights. During the fourth and fifth tests, the Raptor engines performed exactly as they were supposed to. They powered the largest rocket ever built through the vacuum of space and then fired again to slow the vehicle down for a controlled landing. This is a feat that was once considered science fiction. To see a 50 meter tall rocket stage return from space and land precisely on its launch pad is a testament to the power and control of these engines. They can change their power levels very quickly. This is called throttling. It is like how you can press the gas pedal in your car a little or a lot to change your speed. Most rocket engines are either on or off, but the Raptor can go from 40% power to 100% power smoothly. This allows for the delicate movements needed to land a massive rocket. This level of technical mastery has given SpaceX a massive lead in the global market. They now carry the majority of the world's satellites into orbit. In 2022, SpaceX launched more mass into space than all other companies and countries combined. This dominance is the result of choosing the hard path. They didn't settle for the good enough performance of the RD-180 or the BE-4. They went after the full flow stage combustion cycle and the 350 bar pressure limit that everyone else said was too dangerous. By solving the metal and cooling problems that stopped the Soviet Union and NASA decades ago, they unlocked a new level of performance. This breakthrough changes everything for the future of space travel. In the past, going to space was something that happened once or twice a year for a huge cost. It was a rare and special event. Because the Raptor engine is so efficient and cheap to build, going to space can become a routine part of the economy. We are moving toward a world where launching a rocket is no more unusual than a cargo ship crossing the ocean. This is the goal of the Starship system. It is designed to carry 100 tons of cargo at a time. That is about as much weight as 15 fully loaded pickup trucks. With that much capacity, we can build large space stations, moon bases, and eventually cities on Mars. The impact on the industry is already visible. Other companies are now trying to catch up by designing their own reusable systems. However, SpaceX has a head start of over a decade. They have the data from hundreds of flights and thousands of engine tests. They have the factory in Texas that can build a new Raptor engine every single day. This scale of production is unheard of in the aerospace world. Usually building a single rocket engine takes months of careful work by hand. SpaceX has turned it into a high-speed assembly line. This is the difference between a boutique shop and a modern factory. It is how you turn a breakthrough into a revolution. The success of the Raptor engine is a reminder that technical constraints are often just problems waiting for a better solution. For 50 years, the thrust-to-weight ratio of 200 was a wall. SpaceX didn't just climb over that wall, they knocked it down. They proved that with the right materials, the right fuel, and a bold design, you can make a machine that does things the experts said were impossible. This is the essence of engineering mastery. It is not just about making things slightly better, it is about rethinking the entire system from the ground up to achieve a result that changes the world. SpaceX didn't just land a rocket, they made it routine. Over 200 successful landings have occurred while Boeing Starliner has struggled and Blue Origin has yet to reach orbit with a large rocket. The impossible became infrastructure, providing a foundation for the next century of exploration. Now Starship aims to use these engines to turn Mars from a distant dream into an engineering reality.